All right, we got to. <laughs> you got my blessings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's been a great show already. God, I'm glad I'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis Sliwa, Andrew Giuliani, and Bruce Blakeman. Again, three more great guests to come, including this guy who's here on Wednesdays. But uh, he came on Wednesday and he was so disrespectful and nasty and hung up on me. That, um, well, for some reason I forgave him, and now he's back on Friday. It's my friend Peter King. So that was disgraceful how you yelled at me on Wednesday, Pete. Well, actually, Sid, in some ways it's good to be back with you. First of all, let me say on a serious note, I agree yeah. with uh, what you said about Bernie McGurk. He's an outstanding guy, a wonderful friend, and yeah. a real. Uh, and I, he loved you, no, man. He really, really loved you. He really did. He was a great guy going back to the Irish days. Anyway, let me just get you a few things right away. Uh, you and I did have a real dispute on Wednesday, and I just want to say, for the record, I stand by every word I've ever said on Gil uh, Gilgo. I will defend every word that I said. What I was starting to say the other day before you interrupted me is that it was wrong for anyone to even suggest that Sheriff Toulon would not fully protect Rex Ewerman. Uh, Sheriff Toulon is a man of total integrity. And to even be suggesting he would be involved in allowing a suicide and to be killed. And then under the insane theory that somehow your man was involved with Suffolk County government officials when no one, you cannot find anyone in law enforcement who would even suggest that. And also, well, let me, well, let me also one second. The, 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 well, hold on. The suicide part was was more of a joke, obviously. No one, nobody here, not me, not Curtis, not anybody, believed that sheriff, because you're right, he is a good man, the sheriff, would ever be involved in that. That was more of a tongue in cheek. The rest of it, Yes, we were very, very serious, yes. It was. And uh, anyway, let me just get it on the record. Also, I think that Rodney Harrison and Ray Tierney have done and are doing a terrific job. There was also some work before them. Jerry Hart, the former commissioner, who was also head of the FBI in Long Island, she was heavily involved in that. It was, uh, she was the one that found the, uh, the belt, which now could be evidence, uh, that was used to tie the burlap bags. The, the, hair, uh, the uh, hair particle was found back in 2010 and 2011. The FBI did not have the technology at that time to trace the DNA. So I just wish that you would allow me to speak rather than jump in and bring issues I wasn't even talking about. You mentioned Jim Burke. I had no intention of even talking about Jim Burke. He has nothing to do with this. And uh, so to me, it would have been a lot more beneficial for your viewers to let me state my case, you state your case, and not take me off the air. And so I'll leave it at that. We're good well, friends. But, 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 you're, but uh, two things. First of all, you're, you're so wrong. It's, it's because that segment was wildly popular. And we're not going to get ratings to date with this segment like we got then. And all I really care about is ratings. So you're wrong about that. It would not have been better. This, it was actually better the way it transpired. And but 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 because I do love you and respect you and wanted to give you a chance to state it, you're back on today. And I didn't stop you once. But but no, it, it went down the way it was perfect. The way it went down. I mean, perfect. People have been talking for two days about King and Rosenberg. <laughs> but you made your point, and uh, fair enough. I do want to get to Bruce, though, because uh, you've always liked Bruce, and, and you convinced me early on to like Bruce, and you were right. I do like him. And I love what he's doing with the migrant issue in, in uh, at Nassau Coliseum. I know you feel the same way. What do you want to say to Blakeman listening right now about the way he's been so adamant about no migrants here? Well, actually, what I said to him last night, I was at dinner last night with Bruce and Al D'Amato and Joe Cairo at uh, your favorite place, King Umberto's. We had a great time. It is Again, a great it was, place. It was great and serious. You're talking about a lot of issues. And what Bruce is doing on uh, uh, the migrant issue about people uh, say it's going to be coming to Nassau County, he will fight it tooth and nail. And uh, one thing which didn't come up this morning, which Bruce is very concerned about, and here's where I got to give Curtis credit, though that thousand-person uh, tent at Secretmore that is right on the Nassau County border, uh, communities like Flora Park, Melrose, even New Hyde Park, they are directly threatened by that. And in fact, uh, I understand that uh, Flora Park used to have uh, benches that were put right near the county line for people to sit on, to just, you know, sit around and talk. They, Floral Park has taken those benches out that have been there for years. Wow. They didn't want people coming around and hanging out there. That's already how the community has been affected. This is disgraceful. And I agree with you uh, personally. I think Eric Adams is a good guy, uh, but he's got to go after Joe Biden. It's, it's not the administration. It's Joe Biden. Just like what happened with Donald Trump, it was not the, the administration. It was Donald Trump who closed the border, not the administration. And so they've got to go after Biden, and they've got to really make a major issue out of it. And Governor Hochul, for how to be somehow turning on Eric Adams, and to have those two fighting with each other over who's responsible when it's the head of their party who's responsible. And uh, so it's important we stand together, and it's important that uh, we all get behind Bruce on this. Bruce is doing what the people want. He's doing what's right. 
And we can't be having, uh, you know, they're talking about uh, bringing migrants into the National Coliseum. That just can't be allowed. I mean, it can't be allowed. And Bruce will fight as hard and strong as he possibly can. I mean, you tell me, Peter, um, have you heard Eric Adams? Yes, he's mentioned the administration, but he doesn't mention Biden because when he says the federal government, that gives him a chance to attack Republicans, too, with that nonsense immigration reform. But um, have you heard Eric Adams say the word border or the name Mayorkas ever? No, I haven't. And the fact is, immigration reform has nothing to do with this because uh, sealing the border has nothing to do with reform. If they want to talk about dreamers and all that, that's all fine to debate. But we could have passed all the immigration reform in the world, and if uh, the border is not secure, it's not going to do anything. Basically, what they're talking about is making all illegal immigration legal, and then you say there's no more legal immigration. I mean, it's just a word game they're playing. And, you know, even with all this talk, do we put migrants here, do we put them there? There's no end to this. We're not just filling up Yankee Stadium, City Field, and Madison Square Garden. Yeah. The way it looks now, this is be going on. It's going to go on for days, weeks, months, and years to come. If we have an open border and there's just a direct link to all the cities in this country, it's going to go on forever. So whether or not they use this, this place or that place, that's almost irrelevant. You, you, uh, we have to stop it. But there's no way you're going to cure it by opening up more facilities because all that's going to do is encourage more uh, illegal immigration. And by saying give them working papers, that's going to even double the amount of uh, illegal immigration coming in. Now, this is totally upside down. It's being debated from the wrong end by the media and also by the Democrats. And the Republicans should be outspoken, not be afraid of what the media is going to say. The media is never going to be on our side anyway. And it's absolutely essential and vital that we get together behind guys like Bruce Blake, behind, again, someone like Curtis. On this issue, he is 100 percent right. And uh, again, my only Agreed. surprise is that uh, they let him out of Cream or the other night. I thought that was a perfect <laughs> opportunity to back up there, bring him inside, and leave him there. That's but anyway, true. What can I, say? I said I said the same thing to Danielle watching the news. I go. What? <laughs> <laughs> they let him go home. But, uh, uh, you know, on a serious note, this uh, MS-13 issue that you guys have worked so hard on for years, and, and this goes back to Trump. Trump did a great job with that. You know that. You've talked about it, him coming to Absolutely. Nassau County. And, and now I hear rumors, and it could, be, it could just be rumors, that they have found a couple of guys who came across the border with those MS-13 tattoos on their neck. Have you heard any of that? Can you confirm or deny that? I, I, I've certainly heard that. And even if they hadn't found them, you know it has to be true. MS-13 does everything it can to get its operatives here into uh, Suffolk County and Nassau County. Back in 2014, I guess, or 2015, when you had the uh, unaccompanied minors, these were supposedly young, innocent kids, 12, 13, and 14, storming across the border. They were taken to a place in Minnesota and then reassigned around the country. And a lot of them were assigned to uh, Suffolk County. And the crime rate went up. MS-13 was actually involved. Now, you actually had kids as young as 13, 14, 15 years old who were operatives for MS-13, recruiting kids in the schools they're in. So you had these guys coming in. They were 13 years old with maybe a second-grade education at best. They couldn't speak a word of English. No one knew what, what their health records were. And as it turned out, a number of them were agents of MS-13. And people say, how could a 14-year-old kid be an agent of MS-13? Either, number one, he could be an actual operative of MS-13, or his family could be being, uh, being held uh, hostage down in Central America, and he's being told what he had to do. And I remember being in a, uh, a uh, middle school in one of the communities out there, and the principal, who was an African-American woman, uh, very liberal as far as I know, so this is no acupuncture story, she had three kids come up to me who were all uh, undocumented minors. And she had them speak to me and all that. And when I walked away, uh, she said, you know, what do you think? I said, oh, you know, two of those kids were okay. But that one guy, he, he's absolutely brilliant. Boy, we're lucky to have people like him in the country, even if you come in illegally. She laughed in my face. She said he is a cold stone, stone cold MS-13 operative. He's wow. recruiting here in the school. No so kidding. that's how it was. I mean, and wow. you talk to the cops out there. And you're right about Donald Trump. What he did was he was able to coordinate with the Suffolk County Police uh, Homeland Security and the United States Attorney's Office, and they really, not that you crush MS-13, but in the, 17, in the 18 months before Donald Trump came in first to Suffolk County and then Nassau County, there have been 25 brutal murders in 18 months, and it was all other immigrants that were being killed. And the bodies were being killed actually within maybe 100 feet of, of main roads to show how brazen they were. Since then, there's not been one MS-13 murder I'm aware of in, in Suffolk County. And the irony is when Donald Trump came in the first time, 
You had all these progressive groups out there picketing him all along the route, saying he was a racist, he's a bigot, and ICE, and HSI, uh, stop the Justice Department, tie the hands of the cops. The fact is, from that moment on, there's not been one <laughs> MS-13 murder. Oh. Now, we said that. They're still there, but they're undercover, and they're afraid to show their faces. As more of them come in, and uh, the breakdown continues, we could be back to another reign of uh, bloody terror. Suffolk and Nassau County. That would be awful. 60 seconds to go. So you said all these nice things about Trump just now, and I know how you feel because I've listened to you on other shows on the station, right on the money about the indictments, and you think it's an injustice. So uh, two of my best friends, and, and, and for folks that are listening, I know I'll call everybody my, my dear friend. Truth be told, all kidding aside, Bo Deedle and Peter King are really two of my best friends. That's a fact. My family loves him, the whole thing. So Bo uh, now has come around. He has decided after going never Trumper for a bit, he says, well, I always liked Trump, but he can't win. Now he's put all that aside, and he's behind Donald Trump, who's going to win the primary now at this point. You know that. Uh, is it fair to say, Peter, you've joined with uh, Bo, or are you still uh, really concerned about uh, the possibility of him winning the general election and therefore can't place all your faith in Trump. No, I'm still not supporting him in the primary. Obviously, he's the nominee of the party. I will support him. But I do have real concerns about his ability to win in November. And uh, you know, the last election, uh, putting aside the issue of whether I was stolen or not, the fact is it never should have even been as close as it was based on his record. But he leaves himself open. He creates these controversies, self-inflicted wounds, <clears throat> which have nothing to do with his character or anything else. Self-inflicted wounds. So, no, I'm still not. Not supporting him, but if he's nominated the party, I certainly will. And Biden, we have to get rid of Joe Biden. We have to remove him from office. But this is one of the worst, worst administrations ever. I mean, I can't imagine anything being as disorganized and wrong, in many ways as corrupt, as the Biden administration. That's a heck of an appearance, Pete. I'm glad you came back and uh, got a chance to uh, say what you said about Long Island. And I, I, uh, I love when everybody comes on and, and uh, tells folks how they feel. Every now and then, uh, you know, fights happen. Turns out to be very, very good radio, but it means nothing. At the end of the day, I love you, respect you, and you're great. So thank you for coming on today. Have a great weekend. We'll talk again on Wednesday, Peter King. Thank you. You're the man.